Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying a pattern called the Tungsten Goldie. This one comes from the Umpqua Fly Manager, Brian Schmidt. It's a pretty simple pattern. Well, not entirely simple. It's a little bit more complicated than some of the stuff we've been doing. It's got a nice two-tone profile with a dark back and a golden light belly. It's got a lot of weight on there, so it's going to be great for getting into some of those deep holes. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. I'll get your name entered into the next draw for some of the uh, flies that we tie in the channel, some fly tying materials, a few stickers as well. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. Let's get a fresh hook in the vise. So I put a four millimeter tungsten bead onto this fire hole 315. I'm gonna be working in a size 10 here today. That's uh, one of the uh, medium sizes that this fly comes in. I think uh, Umpqua ties this from an eight down to a 14 or a 16, I believe. So we're gonna add a little bit extra weight to this. Just going to bring out some of our 0 0.02 lead and we'll just add a few wraps uh, somewhere between uh, 8 to 10 wraps of lead just in behind and just enough we can add a little bit extra weight and we can tuck that in behind the bead. Just use the back of our scissors here to cut that off and just tuck in the ends. Just use your nail or you can use the back of some scissors to tuck that in. For thread we're going to be using some 70D Rusty Brown. And I believe the original pattern called for a brown Danville. That's uh, pretty similar. It might be a little bit darker but it's a pretty close match. So we'll just start by ramping up the difference in diameter between the lead wraps and the hook and then we'll just start to wrap over top of that lead just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere we'll start wrapping back to where we want our tail placement to be you don't want to go back too too far in the bend of that hook I, I don't like my flies to have too much of a curve in the shank that looks pretty good so we're gonna grab a little bit of uh, pheasant tail I've got a bleached dyed golden olive here I believe the original calls for a ginger or an amber uh, this is fairly light color and it's uh, once it gets tied in it matches fairly well so you can use like uh, bleached or ginger dyed ginger should work really well so we'll just pull the fibers off i'm going to take a generous clump of fibers here we're going to use this to form both the tail and the back strap and as well as the shell back on this fly so you want to make sure you've got something with a little bit of length in it so we'll tie that down and you don't have to be um too precise you don't want to take up a lot of the length we're going to fold this back I'm going to take two pieces of gold flashaboo uh, I think they originally used a holographic <clears throat> a holographic flashaboo we're just going to be using a solid here the other thing you might want to consider is using some of the speckled flashaboo we'll give it a nice look tie the flashaboo off in the middle and then we'll fold that back just to double on up on itself so you've got a nice solid connection with the flash of boot it's not going to get pulled out we'll fold that pheasant tail back and then we're going to advance or actually we're going to tie in our ribbing here so for that we're going to use some uh, brassy sized gold wire and the original used an amber um, so just some slight differences in the color that we're going to produce from the original but it's kind of a nice 
gold colored here. So we'll go ahead and we'll tie that wire in along the side of the hook shank and then down to tie in point at the tail. Take our thread up a little bit here and we're just going to kind of eyeball this. This is kind of where we want our body to end and where we want our thorax to begin. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some ice dubbing or some diamond dub. I've got diamond dub uh, for the number here. I think this is 124 and it's fairly close to the uh, yellow di uh, ice dub. So this one has a UV in it as well. A couple UV fibers mixed in with the yellow. So we'll just go ahead and we're going to create a thin dubbing noodle here. A uh, couple inches long. And then we're going to twist that on nice and tight. And we're going to wrap that. We want to have a little bit of a taper towards the front into the thorax area. It's going to be fairly level for the most part. Just work in short lengths of the dubbing noodle. You just want to make sure that that's on there fairly tight. And then we'll work that back into the tail area. And you can kind of see that bump that we created when we fold them back. That pheasant tail gets hidden underneath the dubbing. You want to try and keep that as small as possible when you're uh, tying down the pheasant tail. But you can use the dubbing to hide that a little bit as well. All right, so this can be a little bit tricky. I find it a little bit easier if you kind of twist the vise sideways. You can kind of line it up a little bit better. And you want to just kind of push those fibers and flatten them down a little bit. So you've got a nice um, level space to work on. And then we're going to pull those gold flashaboo, get that lined up. Press it down, add a couple wraps. Make sure you check in. If it's not exactly where you want it, you can always unwrap and make sure that those all get centered. If there's a little bit of separation on them, that's fine. This uh, One of the flashaboo fibers has gone over to the side, so we'll unwrap that and we'll realign those before we commit it onto the fly. That looks better. We've still got a little bit of separation there, but that's going to work fine. Now we're going to just secure that and then we'll wrap up our ribbing on here. Oh, we missed the fiber, so we'll just pull that forward and mix it in with the rest there. Okay, so we're going to wrap with our gold wire here. And you just want to make sure that you're not putting too much tension on that so that you're going to pull that shell back over. So you just want to make sure that as you're wrapping over top, just kind of secure that back strap or the shell back just so that it doesn't twist around the side of the hook shank on you. And once we get it into the thorax, we'll just add a couple extra wraps just to make sure that it's really secure. And we'll tie that off with a few generous wraps of thread. I'm not too concerned about how much buildup we have here. We're going to cover this up with dubbing also. Give that a bit of a helicopter off. And we'll start working on our thorax here. So let's pull all those fibers back. We'll do the flashaboo first. Tie it down. And then we'll bring the pheasant tail fibers and we'll wrap those down. All right, so we've got a nice clean area to work with here. We're gonna take a little bit more of the yellow ice dub or light yellow ice dub, and we're gonna make this a little bit more generous. We're gonna add a little bit extra, a little bit thicker dubbing noodle here, and we're gonna start wrapping a fat thorax here. So we'll just do kind of mostly concentrated towards the back. Then we're going to add some legs on this fly. So I've got a ginger hen hackle here. I'll just kind of clean that up a little bit. So we've got a nice clean area to work with. We're going to take about uh, a third of an inch 
uh, fibers off one side. And we'll just measure those in. I'm going to go about halfway into the body. And we'll just pinch those and use a couple wraps just to secure them in place. And then we'll come in and cut off the butts. Add a couple more wraps just to clean up the ends. Don't have to worry too much. We're going to add a little bit more dubbing there to clean that up after. And we'll take the other side, grab the other side of our feather and pull those off. Make sure you line up the tips of the hackle fibers first and then pull them off. And then you just want to kind of eyeball those fibers. Make sure that the tips of those are going to end around the same spot. It can be a little bit tricky. And again, we'll just tie those down a few wraps and we'll come in with the scissors and cut off the butt ends. Add a few more wraps just to kind of clean up those ends. And we're going to take a little bit more of our ice dubbing just to kind of cover the tie-in spot there a little bit and hide any of the imperfections that we might have in that fly. Pull everything back, just plump that up a little bit. So now we're going to pull the rest of that pheasant tail. Again, we want it to be somewhat flat. We tie that in. And just add kind of a loose wrap at first here. Make sure everything's in place where we want it. And uh, once we're happy with that, we can go ahead and add a couple more secure wraps. And we're going to pull over our flashaboo. And again, we're just going to add a light wrap. Make sure we got it where we want it. Looks good. Come in here and trim that off. And we're going to add a few more wraps just to clean up the tie-in point here. And we'll just get underneath that tie-in point to lock it in place. Now you can head cement this fly at this point and call it a day. I'm going to actually add a little bit of UV resin here just to add a bit of a shell back. And this will also lock in our thread wraps. Quick whip finish, trim the thread. So for the UV resin that I'm using on this, I'm going to be using a thin application of the Solaries and just put a little bit in there at first just to make sure let that soak into the fibers Let that sink in And one thing I like to do is just kind of turn that upside down before I hit it with the UV light Just let gravity kind of do a little bit of the work. It's not quite the shape I wanted so we can adjust that a little bit Looks a bit better. Hit that with the UV light. If you want to build that up a little bit more, you can always add a little bit more UV resin to that. Looks pretty good. So we'll just add a few more, um, or a little bit of head cement there just to finish that up. Make sure all that all those uh, thread wraps are locked in place. There you go. That's the Tungsten Goldie. Hope you get a chance to try that one out. Get out fishing. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vise. Cheers.